Hello everybody, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls and this is our weekly angelic message for the week beginning September 14th, 2020. Let's just dive right in here. I know that we have been experiencing a lot of tumultuous energies, a lot of kind of like turmoil and all of that. And we're being taught to toughen up a little bit here. Now that is not the same thing as becoming desensitized. That's not what we're talking about but rather looking at things for what they are. As I always say, if you've gotten a personal reading from me, you know I say this, to be the observer but not get invested, okay? And if you're passionate about certain things, we're all human, we all get passionate, you know, that'll happen, but that's not even what we're talking about. That's what people will like to hang on to and try to twist it so like, see, you're doing that. That's not it, okay? That is not what we're talking about here. Coming into this week, I am hearing devastation. I am hearing that. That does not necessarily have to mean that something devastating happens out in the world, but rather there is the effect of devastation that is sort of catching up to us. Okay. So there's this feeling here of coming to terms with learning to see what's there, to stop hiding, to stop pretending, to stop, you know, whatever it is that still allows this toxicity to flow and flow and flow. And, you know, it could go one way where it's like you're completely brainwashed by mainstream society um, or you're going and overcorrecting and now you're like, I just, I'm going to do the stupidest things in the world just to rebel or I'm hurting, therefore I'm justified in hurting other people. You know, we, weird things that people start coming up with. There is, oh God, guys, there is no, there's so many things that this toxicity is making people do. And it really does come from people not understanding their own power. They don't understand their own nature. Because if they did, if they were truly tuned in to the portal of the soul, they would see their own soul's contract. They would, if you want to see it that way, um, or whatever their sense of purpose is. They would see the lessons behind what they're doing. And that's not what's going on here. People are in such amnesia. As we've been saying for weeks and weeks, the ego consciousness has completely short-circuited. And, and I, I just heard out and I felt like, like the soul just kind of leaves. Now, normally when a soul leaves, the body would start it would be dead. It would be done, right? There's something, I know this sounds wild and weird. And you'd be like, Michelle, what in the world are you talking about? And I'll tell you right now, I'm not really sure <laughs> what I'm talking about. I'm not really sure what this is, but I just, if it comes up, I'll give it to you. And we'll have to see how things play out. But there is such a thing of someone having their light absent. As I said, running on fumes of fear. I say that all the time running on fumes of fear and running off of people's guilt and their shame. It gives them a buzzy electrical charge and that's what keeps them going. Notice people who are used to feeding off of others, having to be at home by themselves. They were the first ones to cry out, I'm not doing well. Meanwhile, there's tons of us out there who do everything on our own and don't get much support and are always attacked for trying to speak up or set boundaries or whatever. And that gets twisted like you're evil, you're self-righteous, you're this, you're that. But those people who could not stand not feeding, it's because they have no light. They have no light. And I know you guys are going to get all like up in arms about it. I guess that's very telling, isn't it? Isn't it? I'm not being quiet. No, I don't know what Mars is doing in my chart right now, but I feel fired up. <laughs> okay, <laughs> like, I'm not taking it anymore. And I want to step up on behalf of everybody else who might be afraid to speak up and say, I'm here. And no, we don't need to take that. Okay, but it's not about the surface level story, guys. There's something far deeper going on here. A little nutty. Okay. <laughs> it's just a little nutty. I don't know. So we're going to have to see what is playing out here, but it's a sting. 
there's some sort of sting. I almost think of like sting operation or maybe, I don't know, maybe like on the surface level story, there's a sting operation that comes out. And we get so dazzled by that, don't we? Like, oh my God, it came to pass. That don't even matter, okay? Like that's not even, well, unless it's something that's really like helping the kids or something like that. But, you know, that's not the, we're not doing these, or I'm not doing these readings so that I can predict something and be right and get a charge out of that. Not, not that there's anything wrong. I know there are some of you out there who do predictive arts and you're amazing and I love you and you're awesome, okay? <laughs> but I'm saying people who do it for the wrong reasons or they have that expectation around it, like they can't really function unless they know what's happening. They're so fearful of their future. What we're looking at here is a deeper message. We're looking at where does humanity need to start taking a turn? And I know there are some of you out there, you see this. You see how people who, you can see their false face. So they're sort of like who they really are here and there's the persona that they put out to everybody. You, you see that two-faced nature, all right? You can see that. And then you also see how that particular kind of person will go to somebody who's just a multifaceted human being, who's gonna have a bad day, gonna have a good day, whatever, and go, no, you're the two-faced one because you're not in constant, in a constant uh, same mood kind of thing. Therefore, you're evil. And everybody look over here, look over here. We're looking at the game plane. We're looking at, you know, standing up and saying, no, you're not gonna silence me. No, you're not gonna judge me, right? I mean, I've had plenty of people come out and say, those people are hurting and you need to, again, I, we need to start looking at and recognizing the people who have signed up to serve the feeder souls. They're kind of in the middle. And if anything, you know, I keep saying like, oh, this stuff is so prevalent in this world. But really, I mean, yeah, there's a big part of that population that is running on <laughs> no light. They're running on no light, okay? And it's scary. These are the people who are capable of anything. They're capable of trying to destroy you, um, just being evil, okay? And watch people who claim that there's no evil in the world. Watch that too, because again, that's another distraction tactic. You know, like, oh, it's gonna be okay. I, I appreciate your, you know, want to be positive, but we have to, we have to start recognizing right? And, and it's so funny because people try to get, they're doing triangulation. Be careful with this. Hey, here's how I feel about this. Anybody else? Anybody else on my side? See, they agree with me. Okay. Start educating yourselves. <laughs> Educate yourselves. I'm not an expert in psychology. I'm not qualified to give psychological advice or anything like that. That's not the intention of this video. I have to say that because they will come for me. Um, but we do deserve to understand that part of human nature and how does that affect us? How is that affecting society? Because a lot of our societal rules and regulations, even the unspoken ones, are built upon those expectations, okay? That you don't feel anything, that you don't express opinions, that you recognize um, who is your king, right? And you have to give in to that person. Look at relationships and if you're out there trying to date, <laughs> yeah. Real fun, isn't it? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Where, you know, you're expected to kind of fall in with what somebody wants, right? Again, that's not everybody, but there is that portion of society. And then we have this bigger portion of the population who basically, I don't, I don't think of them. I know some of you are going to say, oh, they're the, the sheep. I don't know about that. I don't know that they are sheep necessarily because that's really derogatory, but I think it's easy for all of us to be going through our traumas and traumas keep repeating and you might start you might be in the process of shutting down your feelings because it's just a lot to process all love and respect to you but then you allow these people to come in and tell you how it's gonna go and then if you try to set a boundary what happens you stepped out of line and what happens when you step out of line there are consequences and then you get exhausted and then you go, I just don't want to make waves. That's why people don't like my channel so much sometimes. Oh, this Michelle, she's just always making waves. <laughs> right? Listen, I know what I'm doing and I know where I'm going to land. And popularity is not something that really matters to me. I mean, I like to pay my bills. Sure. But, um, you know, I don't, I don't care about that. I don't care about that. So we need to watch this other portion of the population that is constantly defending the people who want to feed. 
because they've been trained to think they, they started to get tired. They kind of lowered their energy. And then it was very easy for these people to come in and try to convince them of how things should be. And they're buying into it. And then there's this other part where we're all just sitting back going, y'all not see this. Y'all not see what's going on. <laughs> like, do you, are you serious? Oh, oh, I'm the bad guy. Oh, I'm the narcissist. Hey, I mean, okay, 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 you know, so, <laughs> you know, I have a hair tickle on my face and now I probably just rubbed all my foundation off. Um, you know, so, so this, this whole thing of like twisting things around so that we're the bad guy, we're the ones that need to be fixed, we're the ones, and then there's isolation that comes with that. If you are on the same page as me, I feel you. It's tough out here and it's just getting tougher. But remember, we aren't put here necessarily to save everybody. We're just here with our perspective. We can offer it and that's all we can do. And if somebody wants our help, we can try to help. If they're not going to listen and that's what they choose, then when the world does its complete sharp turn, which it's coming. Sharp turn meaning over a few years. That's still pretty short <laughs> for all the things that are gonna be different. Um, they're just gonna have to deal with it. I mean, they're just, they're, they gotta hold accountability for themselves and for their actions and you can't be the one to save them because we have a right to enjoy our lives too. We're here to be human. We're here to enjoy human things. We should be embracing our feelings and our beautiful ability to be uh, empathic and to feel what other people feel within moderation. You've got to take care of ourselves in that way. But to no longer tolerate these made up things, these made up goals. Have you, have you, okay, so have you, any of you out there done this thing where you're like, what's the big deal? Or you get the feeling of this is so made up. Everyone's taking this so seriously and it's, and I don't mean about stuff that's happening <laughs> in the world. I'm talking like, um, when I was a little kid, you know, going to the spelling bee and there were parents, not my parents, my parents were never like stage parents or anything like that, but there were parents that were like really hard on their kids to perform, to be good, to be the best, not to be good, but to be the best. And I, as a, as a little, little girl, I don't know how old I was, seven maybe seven years old. I didn't know what the big deal was. Okay. So if I get up and I prove I can spell these words, then what? <laughs> Who cares? I'm still the same person as I was before I got on the stage and spelled that word for you. I didn't understand why everybody was taking it so seriously. Well, cause there's a trophy involved. Who cares about a stupid trophy? And weirdly, I used to get trophies all the time as a kid because I didn't care about them, right? Uh, so, <laughs> you know, or when people are like, oh, I have to have that job, that position. What for? Well, it just feels so great to have that title. And then what? Right? So it, <laughs> prom. I'm going to give one more example. Prom. I used to have a lot of fun, you know, cause I would design my own dresses and then have somebody make them like, you know, there was like a seamstress in town or get help from somebody to, to make the dress. And that part was really fun. But the other stuff that people put into it, I'm like, what is the big deal? It's the most special night of your, okay. I can't, I gotta stop because I, oh my God, <laughs> then I will offend people. <sighs> but some of us out there just don't understand um, this human thing of putting so much importance behind certain things. Can I leave it there and just say that? So that's a pretty good indication that you're here for the purpose of being that observer and almost being like a little reporter back to the divine. If you want to see it that way and going, Hey, this is what doesn't work about humanity. Hey, this is, uh, you see this, you want, you want to come down a lightning, but we'll take anything, you know, just <laughs> make it stop because this isn't working. Okay. Or, you know, sometimes making up stuff can be, um, very healing 
for a group of people that maybe they don't have their own thing and so they can come up with something that's special to them and it helps them bond. There's a lot of value behind that. But what I'm getting at here is that there's a lot of shallowness that goes into certain things. <laughs> like, okay, so one kid is better than another because they knew one more word, knew how to spell one more word than the other kid did. Come on, that's not real. That's not real at all. None of it is, all right? So, <laughs> so this is what we're starting to expand upon and start to understand and starting to open up about. And yeah, there are going to be people acting out. We're going to see people uh, doing crazy things, crazy things to harm one another because they're deconstructing. They're, they're, their way of thinking of things is being challenged and they just can't handle it. The ego can't handle it, okay? So let's get on to the cards. All right, everybody, if you would like to get a personal reading with me, it's going to be deep. We're not just going to hang on the surface. Just go to angelsouls444.com. Uh, if you would like to check out my courses, just go over to Gumroad. All right, Gumroad slash Angel Souls. I have all kinds of courses on, you know, getting in touch with your angels, perceiving your angels, uh, on various archangels, meditations, all that good stuff over there. Thank you to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And stay tuned because I will be coming out with brand new types of readings, just fun readings, you know. All right, so we have, I'm just, I don't know why I feel the need to get all the cards right now. Apparently they're all gonna tell a story. Okay, so let's, let's do it that way then, fine. I can cooperate with cards, okay. Um, put things aside, hold on a minute. The first card out here was Moonstone, Live Your Purpose. And we were just saying, if you, observe the world and you don't understand why people get so hung up on things. I don't understand why people get so hung up on looks. Like there's so many different forms of beauty. What, what's this thing where we put rules around it, that, especially rules where not everybody's gonna fit into that category, nor could anybody fit into, people are going through surgery. Okay, now listen, if you get a little bit older and you have to have surgery to pick things up off the ground, I'm with you, okay? I'll probably be there one day. <laughs> but I'm talking like trying to have surgery so that you fit a standard, God bless you. If that's what you want to do, I'm right there with you. But I just from that like broader perspective, trying to look at human behavior, it's just not something that I understand. Doesn't make it bad. Don't jump on me. Again, that's another little human thing, wanting to jump on everything and argue about everything so that you feel right. We ain't doing that. The world is changing, okay? Unsubscribe if you must. I don't, it makes me no difference. I don't care. But anyway, <laughs> live your purpose, start embracing it and stop apologizing for it. Like I said, I don't understand certain standards of beauty, why people feel like they need to fall into that. What is that? You know, some of us are here to observe that. So, and, and what is the emotional impact of that? What is the wisdom? What is the wisdom? So if you want to learn your purpose and you're thinking, oh, my purpose is, when people talk purpose, they're talking destiny. And destiny is this idea, it's, it's the human story idea. It's not your soul, like people will say soul destiny. I disagree with you, there's a soul destiny. There's a soul uh, assignment or something, okay? And yeah, you're supposed to be here to do that and yeah, you'll probably fulfill that. But destiny starts to make it seem as if everything's out of your control. At least that's how the human brain interprets it, okay? And that's where I say, be careful with that. You know, is there something that you're supposed to accomplish in this life? I'm sure, or else you wouldn't be here. But using that word to determine or to, uh, you know, basically say I have no control over everything, you're playing in a low frequency and you're not embracing your fullest potential, right? So that's part of your purpose. That's part of understanding that purpose is that it's not just a job and a title and all those kinds of things, but, but rather what what can your soul learn the most? When you focus in on that, then the purpose starts to show up. Now, if you're in your ego consciousness and you have it in your head, like I did one time, uh, I have to be a, in editing, I have to be an editor and that's all there is to it. Well, I wasn't meant to be an editor and everything was in my face showing me that I wasn't supposed to be an editor. <laughs> I had something else that I had to do. And I can tell you right now, for years, I've been feeling a shift coming around the next step, like something that I'm supposed to be doing, you know, and I don't know what that's going to look like. I'm just hanging in there. So that's what we're talking about, about understanding yourself on a soul level, not just looking at the surface and saying, that's my purpose. Okay. 
that could lead you to that understanding of that purpose. But a label just isn't going to do it. Our human language doesn't really hit anything <laughs> to its fullest, if that makes sense. All right, so then we have um, Epidote, go deeper. Look at that. See, these are telling a story. Interesting, interesting. So go deeper. Stop looking at just the surface level of things. You get wound up in that, then you're being controlled. You're being controlled by a narrative that's not yours. Go deeper. And if you don't know how to go deeper, you might want to start healing because maybe you're avoiding your heart or did you experience something where your wiring does sort of short circuit? There's help out there. Okay. Reach out and get it. Lapis lazuli, make a decision. Choose. What are you going to choose? Are you going to choose to listen to your intuition? Are you going to choose to listen to your soul? Or are you going to choose to listen to society that says if you are going to be of value, then you have to have this kind of job this kind of partnership. You can't be single. That's another one that I, I don't understand about human beings. Um, oh, we're a tribal people. We have to be together. Go outside. There are people everywhere. Okay. <laughs> listen, you're never without people. Okay. How many billions of people are on this earth? So are you going to listen to your intuition or are you going to listen to society? Make a decision. That is what that is saying. And then we have Aventurine, create your own luck. See, when we disconnect from all of that and we start to live the way that is going to make us truly happy, we're free from all the nonsense. We don't have to listen to that anymore. And we are creating, we're taking accountability for our path and for our existence here. And we're creating our own luck. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. We can do it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get the color card going here. There's a lot of us trying to heal this whole idea of, you know, what to do with our energy. Because we get really scattered. We get focused on things that aren't ultimately going to be helpful or, you know what I'm saying, or even, I don't know, just the, the toxicity has to go. It has to go. It's time. And it's going to hang on for dear life, but it's time. Okay, so our color card is blue. Activate your healing power. The number is 37. We need to be done. There needs to be completion. And activating your healing power does not mean, oh, I get to be known as a healer and I can heal every. You know what? There are a lot of sociopaths out there who say stuff like that too because they're trying to get everybody to believe that they can heal, that they're more special than anybody else and that they can do this. But what this is actually saying is learn to heal yourself. Learn to take care of you. Yes? And again, Archangel Michael, kind of energy, lots of clarity going on here. Let's be done with the toxic energy. Let's stop playing into it. All right. So we're going to leave it there, guys. I'm sending you all so much love and take care.